Okay, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Here it talks about different spiritual gifts that are more supernatural. Um, the word of wisdom, that means that God gives us the, uh, the right words to say that, you know, that uh, the words that we say with wisdom, that we can help people with wisdom. And then the words of knowledge is uh, that we know something that God gives us uh, supernaturally, that we know something about somebody which we normally don't know. And so that is a spiritual gift. For instance, uh, someone could know uh, the sickness of someone or uh, some hidden sins or, uh, the, uh, or God's calling in their life. So that's the word of knowledge that God can tell us. Uh, God can tell us about uh, some situation or condition of a person. And then faith. Now here it is not talking about saving faith. It's talking about faith to believe that God can do mighty things. So we have faith that we can, you know, um, believe that God can do mighty things and the faith of miracles, faith of uh, bringing a revival, faith of helping people, building a church. And then gifts of healing, that God can give us the gifts of healing that we can help people uh, to, uh, pray for them and lay hand on them um, and then uh, that people get healed. Okay, and then works of miracles, working of miracles, that there are different kinds of miracles like um, uh, now in uh, special situations, God can uh, give us ability to perform miracles like walking on water to escape from the enemy in a time of persecution or to move mountains or to feed many people with a small amount of food uh, or walking through a wall to escape the enemy or to escape from a prison if God wants to do that, for, uh, help us to do that or like um, Philip that he was taken up away from a place to another place. So God can perform miracles like that. And then to another prophecy. Prophecy has two meaning. One is prophesying the future. Second is to say things that are needed by a person. That something that the person need uh, the guidance. So uh, the guidance um, the guidance that uh, the per that God gives to, to a person that, you know, for instance, God calls someone to be a, a minister, a missionary to somewhere, or to do certain things get, that uh, God wants him to do, uh, some kind of ministry. And then discerning of spirits, that he can discern the, the spirit, the evil spirit present. And then another different kinds of tongues, to, to, so to speak, tongues, and then in, to another uh, interpretation of tongues, so that that we can interpret uh, what you know what is the meaning, uh, what's the message of someone else, someone else uh, tongues. Okay, so we talk about this last time, and then so now we talk about how to discover our spiritual gifts. How to discover our spiritual gifts. Now, first, we can start with things we naturally want to do. Because, um, okay, um, that, you know, because God gives us uh, spiritual motivation, each person God calls us. God calls us to, um, do certain things. Some people have the gift of music. You know, naturally he wants to play music. Some people have a caring for people and he's, uh, he's uh, uh, very natural for him to care about someone or to have concern for the saving of souls. So these are some natural instincts of certain p people. So this is from our spiritual gifts that God has given us that uh, some of these are inborn, that some people have the natural tendency uh, to do certain things, that they want to do certain things. It could be 
uh, that the spiritual gifts that God has given them. So some people have musical sense. And then some people want to share what God has done in their lives. Some people have uh, the, the, they really want to share. Some people really want to share. And then some people want to do evangelism. And some people want to share God's messages. Now, uh, so God has given people the natural instincts that it could, you know, uh, to be, uh, could be their spiritual gifts. That God can give certain people the natural uh, uh, motivation to do certain things. So we can start with those things. When I first believed in Jesus, my first thing I wanted to do was to do evangelism. I, I started to talk to many people about the presence, the reality of God. Uh, and so uh, it was very natural for me. So I kept doing that, that I was motivated by the Holy Spirit to tell people about how real God is and how good God is. And I told many, many people about Jesus. And then later I was teaching in a school and then uh, the principal, it was a Christian school, and the pr principal said that every teacher will, uh, will preach, that would take turn to preach in the chapel time of the students. And some teachers, when they heard that, they, you know, they, they, they felt there was pressure. But for me, when I heard that, I was excited. I was excited. So that was my natural tendency. I want to preach the Word of God. I want to tell people about God. I want to tell people about what God has done in my life. So it was very natural for me. And also later I found that I really want to teach the students. I want to train them. I want to have Bible study with them. Uh, so that was a, a spiritual gift to nurture them, to, uh, to take care of them, to shepherd them. And then I also uh, took them to go out to do evangelism. So that was an evangelistic gift and also I want to lead people. I want to lead people to follow God. So those are my, my spiritual gifts. After I believe in Jesus, I found this. And then later, uh, as time goes on, I found that God has given me the gift of training, of training people. And that's why I'm doing the training right now that I, have, uh, that I thank God that He has given me the wisdom how to train people, how to uh, you know, have specific ways that are effective to do ministry. Now first I did it myself. So I, I, keep, I kept doing something and then I found the way to do it. Uh, how to, you know, for instance, how to preach better, how to change people's lives. So I, I kept doing that. And then God gave me the motivation to train other people. So that I thank God for that, for that gift that ha uh, God has given me. Now some of you, um, you know, might not find that you have so many gifts. Not, not many people have many spiritual gifts, but we start with what, whatever is natural to us. And we start doing, uh, using the spiritual gifts. The main thing is to use the spiritual gifts and not to be shy and not to hold back and, and not to be afraid and just do it boldly. So that's something God wants us to do. That to use the spiritual gifts and we first find out what we naturally want to do. And then steps to discover our spiritual gifts. First, we love God and have a close relationship with God. Because the close relationship with God, then uh, that God will change our lives and, and He will uh, cause us to bear much fruit. When we abide in Him and He'll abide in us and then we'll bear much fruit. So that's first thing is the close relationship with God and that's very important. Also, uh, to be able to uh, perform miracles, that God has given us the authority to perform miracles, that we need a strong presence of God. And then second, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now some people, they didn't understand being filled with the Holy Spirit. Some people lead uh, Holy Spirit meetings and they just shout power, 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 fire, fire, and they think this is a way to help people to to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now sometimes it works when people understand and have faith that God wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it's just the voice that, you know, it could, you know, sometimes the loud voice could 
uh, cause some uh, demons to you know to run out you know sometimes you know it uh, cause it to manifest but the main thing is to help people understand that God wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit that's very important to teach people that God really loves us he seeks us he you know he he sent Christians out to seek us to bring us in the kingdom of God so God loves us very much and he wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit and in uh, Acts, the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 17 that God said I want to you know pour the Holy Spirit upon all flesh that is what God want us, wants to do so that's very important for us to understand that God wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit first and then also have a close relationship with God and take care of our sins and and uh, take care of our negative emotions, negative thinking, any bad habits. Uh, so anything that is bad in our lives, any negative things, we want to take care of those and spend more time loving God. Very important. It's not just a shouting, but loving God from the heart. Lord, I love you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I need you. Father, we thank you. You're so wonderful, so wonderful. You're so good. So we love him. The more we love Him and the more we have faith in Him, the more we'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, then miracles will follow our lives. And also, when we pray for people, they will experience the Holy Spirit and we'll discover our spiritual gifts. So it's very important for us to spend time with God and to praise God as much as possible during the day. You know, that any time uh, that... Uh, you know, when we have time or even when we are doing some other things, you know, when we're walking, when we're doing something simple, then we can be praising God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. So we can be praising God and loving God all the time. And even when we are doing other things, when, uh, when I'm writing my sermons, I, I always, you know, uh, very often I will, I will sing songs or listen to songs. And then when I'm you know, so I'm preparing my messages. I will be praising God and loving God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So very often I'm in that condition. So I hope that you all do that, that you all will uh, spend more time with God. Then you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit more. And then obey God's word. It's very important that we obey God's word, that we, you know, don't fall into sins because, because God dislikes sins. Any kind of sin will separate us from God, will distance us from God. So we want to obey God's word. It's very important that God sees our lives. God, we cannot escape, uh, run away from God's eyes. He can always see what is in our heart, what we do, what we say. But some people, they just want some, you know, uh, they want to get something uh, immediately. So they try to, you know, get money for themselves. They just, uh, they just use their own ways. Instead of trusting in God, they use their own ways to get money. So that's not obeying God. When we disobey God, and then what happened is God doesn't like that. And God will take away the spiritual gifts from us. But when we love God, He is happy to give us spiritual gifts. He is very happy to bless us. Okay, number four, have compassion on people. Because spiritual gifts are for building up people. Spiritual gifts is not just for ourselves. It's for other people. That we can have this spiritual gift so that we can bless people. So we want to have compassion on people, care about people, know their needs, and listen to their needs, and care about them, and help them. It's very important to have this heart. Now, because of my videos online, there are many people who seek my help from time to time. There are people who, who uh, try to contact me from time to time. So that's something I thank God. And then I will help them without condition. Many of these people belong to some other churches. They don't go to our church, but I still help them. And some of these people uh, uh, are in a different country, and I still help them because 
I just want to help people to help them with God's gospel and also God's word, God's grace, and to help them in the spiritual life. And then we need to have training on spiritual gifts because, um, for instance, we want to preach, then we need training so that we are motivated motivated to preach with fire and also we need to learn to understand the Word of God and how to write outline, outlines and how to preach with zeal and with the fire of the Holy Spirit and how to have a good outline that you know, it doesn't stray everywhere. Some, sometimes people when they preach, they just go every direction. We want to preach and have a clear direction that we don't stray away, but we want to have a clear direction. Okay, and then so whatever we do, for instance, uh, uh, prophecy that we need training. Now, some people are very eager to use a gift. You know, they they find that they have some uh, gift of prophecy, and then they're very eager to use it without testing it, and that's very dangerous. And that is why many people have experienced this that. Some people who experience the Holy Spirit and they prophesy to other people and the prophecy is not accurate. Now even some famous prophets that happen to them. So we must be very, very careful and very sure about what we hear from God. So that needs training. That one important training is on humility. That we understand that, you know, it's not, the use of spiritual gifts is not to show off. It's not to show how powerful we are, but to show God's mercy, to have compassion on people and follow, uh, you know, that we use the spiritual gifts following God's rule, following God's word. So when we're not sure about something, we must ask God again and again to find out if we receive accurately. And we need different people to help to verify. When we pray for people, we need to ask people uh, did you know was what I say just now uh, accurate when I said something I you know I said something was it from God and was it accurate and if it's not, if it's not accurate we need to have more training and more listening to God and more practice and testing before we use it don't so don't rush to use it now but of course for evangelism the gift of evangelism or helping people spiritually or sharing that we should do it even though when we, when we cannot do it perfectly well but prophecy is one gift we must be very careful uh, to discern before we use it uh, and uh, so because to avoid uh, you know saying prophecies that's not accurate but there are so many prophecies of people that are not accurate so we must be very very careful it's better to be careful. Uh, even if we receive something and, and we're not sure, it's better not to say it until we're sure. It's better to say less prophecies than to say more and they are inaccurate. It's better to say less and they are accurate. So we need to receive training on every spiritual gift, like praying for people for the sickness. It's very important that we don't uh, you know, um, do beyond what the Bible teaches. Now, f about healing, there are many people, they have this teaching that if people have faith, everyone will be healed. Now, that is not uh, supported by the Bible. The reason is, why do I say that? Because Paul himself, when he first preached to Galatia, he had sickness. And also Timothy, that he has been sick many times, so he can take some wine. And also uh, Epaphroditus, uh, that, they, uh, that he was sick almost to death. So Paul himself and his co-workers got sick certain times. So when we pray for people, um, now, uh, unless we hear from God directly, very clearly, that this person will be healed. We don't pray for people like this and say, you, your sickness is healed now, unless we hear from God. 
But there are people who say that. And then when a person says, I'm not healed yet, and then they will say, well, you are healed already. Just believe that you are healed, even though you, feel, you still feel this, the pain, uh, God has already healed you. So believe, believe. Now, that is beyond the Bible. That is not what the Bible teaches. Uh, so when the person really is not healed, don't say that he is healed. That because some people just want to push uh, the spiritual gift to show that they are powerful. So that's very important for us not to be, not to be, not to be, um, you know, going beyond the Bible. As the Bible says that even Paul and Timothy got sick, you know, so that we accept that not all people get healed. Uh, and so we, when we pray for people, we just now for me i just pray for them i pray with them to come to the presence of god to enjoy god thank you jesus we love you we adore you we need you you're so wonderful and we pray and love god so that the presence of god will come very strong and powerful so we love god and adore god and and just enjoy god and then they feel the stronger presence of god and then i lay hand on them and then very often I found that when people, they open their heart to God, then when they trust in God and have a close relationship with God, and then they can get more healing. So usually I wait for them to tell me that they are healed. Uh, unless, you know, if you hear from God that this person is already healed. Uh, so I hope that we're all... Uh, when we use our spiritual gifts, we use it according to the Bible. And don't push it in order to say that, uh, uh, you know, have this intention to say, uh, I, want, uh, I want people to see that I have strong uh, spiritual gifts. I'm very strong uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, I'm a very strong in spiritual gifts and, and uh, I'm a very spiritual man. So don't push for that. We're, it's not to glorify us, to, it's to glorify God. It's, it's better to be humble, humble, and just pray for people. And then they said they are healed, we can ask them, which of you are healed? And then when they are healed, we can ask them to give the testimony. So uh, I suggest that you do, do it like this. You know, but some people say, you know, when I say you are healed, that has faith. Um, now, if God gives you the, uh, that, uh, that gift of faith, that you really have this faith, that when you declare that someone is healed and that he is really healed, then you can use it like this. But if, if you do it and then it doesn't work, that means the person is not healed. The people we pray for are not healed, then don't do it like this. So it's Better to say just, you know, we love God, we worship God, and then let God do His work. And then if the person is healed, we give glory to God. It's very important after a person says he's healed that we'll give glory to God and say, thank God, thank God for doing this. Hallelujah. So, and then after we receive training, then we practice helping people. So we need to practice to use the spiritual gifts that we need to practice praying for people, we need to practice to do evangelism, to build up spiritual gifts of uh, uh, spiritual life of people, uh, to train people, to preach. Uh, whatever we do, we need to practice. And then when we practice, it's good to, uh, if it's possible, to record ourselves or to take videotape of ourselves. Videotape ourselves, and then we can see how we do. Uh, how we, you know, like when we preach, we watch our video again and see how we preach. So that's something uh, we practice and then we, we can use uh, the cell phone or other uh, tool to videotape ourselves to help ourselves to improve. And also we can ask people uh, what they experience. When I pray for people, very often I ask people what they experience. Uh, did they experience anything in the heart and over the body? Now, if they experience peace and joy and strength, power and, and love, and that's good, I said, uh, that's God's working. Now, never say, see how powerful I am, never say that. 
but say, well, God is wonderful. He's doing something good. So thank God, praise God. Always give glory to God instead of giving glory to ourselves and, and never you know, say, wow, I'm great. You know, when we do that, God is not pleased with us. And then He will not help us to go to a high level. When we are humble, then God will use our lives and to uh, raise us up to a high level. So it's very important that when we serve God with spiritual gifts, that we give glory to God and we want to bless people, we have compassion on people, then we have the right motivation, the right intention, and then God is pleased with us and then He will bless us. So uh, I hope you all understand that it's better to please God uh, than to have people admire us. Never, never look for uh, people to, you know, want people to admire us. We never want to do that. We want to always glorify God. Okay, and then, and then we practice, after we practice, then we operate in spiritual gifts. So, when I preach, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be loving God in my heart. So I have a strong presence of God. And then the strong presence of God will motivate me to love God more, motivate me to, to serve God more, to serve God with motivation, with power. So that is operating in spiritual gifts, with a spiritual power. And when a spiritual power, uh, the, whole, the power of the Holy Spirit comes to me, then I can serve God with that spiritual power. Uh, or when I counsel someone, I'll ask God for wisdom, how to counsel that person. So then the Holy Spirit is working in me all the time. And then He will give me wisdom and He will give me, bring His presence to me. And then so I, I can bless people with the, with the presence of God. And then when we uh, want to pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit, then we want to, you know, it's very important. I found that it's not just laying hand on them, but to have all the people together love God. Tell them how wonderful God is. God wants to bless you now. So everyone love God now. Think of God now. Thank God now. Ad admire God now. Uh, adore God now. And think of all the good things about God and enjoy God. And, and that way we help people to, to appreciate God. So when we lead worship, don't just sing songs. From time to time, we can say something like this. God is right here. Let us praise Him. Let us adore Him. And He is very happy when we adore Him. He is very happy when we worship Him. Lord, we are happy that You, you are happy. We want to worship You with our whole hearts. We want to worship You with our whole being. So when we lead worship, we let the Holy Spirit guide us so that we, are, we ourselves are filled with the Holy Spirit, we're filled with the motivation of the Holy Spirit and filled so that the Holy Spirit will, will work through us and the spiritual gifts will operate in that situation. So when I notice that when I pray for a group of people to experience the Holy Spirit, uh, sometimes in the past I just lay hands on people one by one, but now what I do is I will help, help them to all to um, you know, love God at the same time. Father, we love you. We love you. We adore you. We need you. We thank you. We hold on to you. Father, we really like you. So I, I help people to, to really appreciate God and like God. And then when they do that, then the presence of God comes stronger. So I hope that we all do that when we lead people to experience the Holy Spirit. We lead them to love God, to worship God, to believe that God is right here, working right here so that uh, the presence of God will come stronger when the whole group of people uh, adore God, God. When we all love God together, then the presence of God is stronger and the spiritual gifts will be more powerful. And then people can experience healing more and they can experience the joy of the Lord more and experience transformation of life more. So when we do it in God's way, to help people to love God. It's very important in any situation. When we pray for sickness also, we don't just pray uh, for the sickness, for the person to be healed, but we pray that this person will love God, adore God, trust in God. When he loves God when he, and he trusts in God, then he will, the, 
the Holy Spirit will work stronger in his life and he can experience more healing. So whatever we do, let the Holy Spirit do his part. We worship him and love him and let the Holy Spirit guide us and let the Holy Spirit fill us and do his work. That way we are operating in spiritual gifts and in the strong presence of God. And also seek God's strategy in our lives. So that what that means is, you know, after we have the spiritual gifts, then we say, Lord, how can I use it uh, uh, more in my life? For instance, when I know that God has given me the gift of training, that I can tell people specifically what to do in order to improve their life, in order to be able to serve God better. So after I learn this gift, and then I will seek opportunities. First, I went uh, to, uh, to mi the mission field. I, w I have gone to 15 different countries, and in some places I've gone to many cities in the country. And then I, so I uh, went to different places, and I have different meetings and a training, and train people to serve God. And I noticed that I have this gift. You know, the more I do, the more I notice that I have this gift, and I thank God for that. And then what I did was I, uh, during the time of the COVID, I uh, did it online and it continued until today. Actually, now I've already started uh, uh, to go into the mission field already. Actually, I'm going on Saturday, this Saturday. Uh, so I, I will seek opportunities and God opened the way. And let me share with you what happened uh, two Sundays ago.